Hello guys, and welcome back to the second episode of my podcast, Nicholas Butler on Indigenous Topics. In this episode, we'll be talking about the cultural proficiency continuum, and there's many questions. It's not just one prompt that we'll be talking about in this episode. So let's get right into the questions. Where would you presently place yourself on the continuum? On the continuum, I would place myself on the cultural pre-competence level because I'm starting to become more aware of the different cultures and the struggles they face. When these problems occur, I try to let my friends and family know there's an issue and not just ignoring it. Let's go on to question two. Why is being culturally proficient something that's important? Being culturally proficient would contribute to society by ensuring that our institutions are built without systematic racism. We would foresee, for example, barriers to employment are for marginalized groups and build a system that would permit an overall more inclusive society. The more people that become culturally proficient make a safer and more productive society for everybody. Question three, which elements of cultural proficiency do you presently follow, if any? Which elements would you say are the most challenging and why? Personally, I value diversity. I listen to other people's opinions in conversations and try to understand them before forming my own personal opinion. I think the most challenging one for me to understand is assessing cultural knowledge. I have a hard time stepping into other people's shoes since I have not had to face any cultural issues during my life. Question four. Would you say you know anyone who is culturally proficient? If so, how would you describe them in their personality? I've only met one person who was culturally proficient over the years. My friend's father follows all the criteria to be culturally proficient. He sees and understands inequity and he tries to change it by researching the issues, letting his friends and family know and he gets to know the full story before he forms his opinions. He's one of the nicest people you will ever meet. I have never heard him say anything negative about anyone. He also stands up for what's right, even when it can get him in trouble. Number five, do you know anyone who was culturally destructive? If so, how would you describe their personality? Personally, I do not know anyone who is culturally destructive. Since I know someone who is culturally proficient, I can assume the behaviors of someone who is culturally destructive, they would act as a bully to all races. They would see the differences in the oppression, but they want, do not want to change it, it just so it suits themselves. And they do not want to help others because they, do not, because they want to make it worse and not better. Try and list examples of each stage of the continuum. Uh, real life on social media or you've heard of. How do these situations make you feel? For cultural destructiveness, I see on social media people who acknowledge there is an issue but do not care. I've seen on social media indigenous people posting about their unsafe drinking water and people in the comments do not care and are making fun of the person for being indigenous. This makes me feel really bad and upset knowing that people can say that to someone. Cultural incapacity. A perfect example of this is a, a truck rally downtown. These people think they're superior just because they are white. I can infer this because of the Confederate flags that they waved around and racist signs. I think this is extremely rude and disrespectful to anybody or everybody. Cultural blindness. Some of my friends are at the stage in the continuum. They know something is wrong, but they stay in the shadows. They do not speak up or try to make things better. This makes me feel nervous because I do not want to bring up these issues and start an argument with my friends. Cultural precompetence. Most companies are at this stage and they acknowledge that and they acknowledge that. People eat and wear different things. It changes the way the market, they market their products to consumers, but companies are not active supporters of the issue. I personally think it's unethical, especially when companies have a chance to uh, uh, inflict major change because they have a lot of power over the general population. Cultural competence. A good example of this um, is that the Black Lives Matter protests, not ones that caused damage, but rather ones that wanted to affect change in a good way. They acknowledge there is something wrong and they want to make a change. This makes me feel glad knowing people that are taking action. Cultural proficiency. People that participate in Orange Shirt Day on social media. They are acknowledging their issues and they're doing their part to affect change and to educate others on social media. This makes me feel happy since there are people who really support this cause and put time and effort to make a change for the better. And now on to the last question. What's one thing you feel you can do to make yourself more culturally proficient? I can wear an orange shirt day an orange shirt. I should also understand why I'm wearing an orange shirt and not just wear it. I can also let my friends and family know about orange shirt day and why we should wear one and who are we who are we supporting by wearing one. Thank you to, for listening to my second episode of this podcast and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you and have a great day.